how can we uh, how can we um, compare different vendor how can we make a custom pcs hardware and all the stuff remember remember and I'll, I'll i'll always like repeat a sentence three to four times just to get into your mind this thing that not a single vendor is completely perfectly fine for everything for storage devices for ram for casing for speakers for audio video and all this stuff so if you want to have a kind of complete kind of a perfect system you have to go for the custom solution right we have discussed those the SSDs goes from Samsung, the, uh, the board may go from ASUS or Toshiba, the RAMs may be go like it, it, will, it will go from Corsair and, and the list goes on, okay? So this is how you, um, you make um, a perfect vendor management and all the stuff. So being in IT, it is super, super important to have those international vendors on your list, okay? If you don't know the list, you can easily like find out. You can say, okay, HP is like super good in the power backup. That is super good in uh, in the office use. So it depends on the motherboard. It depends on the uh, on on a lot of prospective and user requirements. So uh, the idea is just to know that you people should have the information of vendor management. You're also you should also be very very strong on to know your IT vendors. Okay, so. We had discussed that. Let's just uh, move on today to the storage devices. Uh, we had been uh, through the hardware side. We are slowly touching out and we will slowly gradually when we are like just like finished about the hardware, we'll just touch out the software side as well. So we're just moving on to, to finish out the things, okay? That's one thing for sure that we just want to touch everything little like smaller, just have a piece of cake of our every touch we are having on the motherboards, okay? On those PCs, what are these? So even if, if someone, if a kid asks you to tomorrow, okay, you are the big uncle. What is this capacitor used for? What is the RAM used for? And he would say, oh, it's, it's hard to explain. That's not a good impression, okay? You should know, you should know what are, uh, what, what keyboards do you have? You have mechanical keyboards, you have full numeric keyboard, you have half numeric keyboard. You should know each and every component of the computer machine. That one thing is for sure. That's always going to stay almost the same, okay? It may have a very slight change. They cannot replace, they cannot replace, um, they cannot replace the entire keyboard for you, okay? They cannot say, hey, do you know from tomorrow we are having a keyboard just from one to five? So the, the other five numbers are gone, other five buttons are just vanished in our technology. It's not going to happen that simple, okay? This one thing is for sure. So without any deal, let's jump out to the storage devices. We are having it. We will... Uh, we will have the comparison and contrasting of feature of different external devices that we are having uh, uh, on the storage on the storage side, and also uh, the hardware drives that we are having that that are built in the laptops and the desktops, the optical drives, the flash storage devices we having on, and also the SSD, one of the most most important one that we are going to consider. So we have the solid state drives, we have the simple, uh, our older technology friend HDDs, and we are also having the external hard drives. So who can just quickly type which external hard drives do you know or are you familiar with? Any um, Anyone who are using external backup hard drive? Anyone, you can just have a quick uh, chat tab, you can just, Okay, that's great. Okay, USB, uh, Samsung, that's okay. You should have, I'm expecting some, uh, one more vendor over here, WD, obviously. Thank you so much, Jagrama. That's that's really kind. WD's Western Digital is one of the best ones. Seagate is also fine. That's also two of the big vendors we're having in the storage devices, okay? So these are some, uh, the AJ store, that's fine. So we are just like, uh, maybe they're also like Hitachi is one of the best one. Uh, we are having no, numbers of vendors, okay? It totally depends on the Shiba, that's great. So uh, we have a lot of vendors in the external. I'm just uh, assuming maybe in the country you're living, in the continent you're living it, 
uh, maybe other people may live in the other side of uh, the river, as we say. So they may not have the access to all those vendors, okay? So uh, normally the most common approachable vendor that we're discussing is WD and Seagate. That's one thing for sure. You can find it in Africa and Asia and uh, America, in South America, you can Australia. You, you can just name, I think they, they have reached out their sales to, 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 to those regions. So WD, Western Digital, and um, the Seagate are one of the most important uh, like vendors you're, you'll be having for external and also for the internal, remember that, okay? So we will be also having some common file uh, system features, including compression, encryption, permissions, general name, and uh, we are having file name, uh, naming rules, okay? Compare and contrast common file system and TFS. And we are also having... Uh, FAT32, HFS and um, extension of four, obviously, and describe disk partitioning and formatting methods, describe the disk maintenance posture, including defragmentation, repair, and cleanup. And obviously, we will have a quick kind of emerging storage technology. So we, we are... So now we are like having a touch of complete... Uh, a storage kind of things, the hardware that is over here. For, for that, I would like to look all of you at your keyboard, okay? To your laptop keyboard, you're having it and all the stuff. And just, just look to the keys of keyboard and all the stuff, okay? I'll be just stopping my screen for a little while. And I'll be showing uh, one, of the, uh, one of the videos over here for you guys. That's uh that's that 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 we were having it today in our session so i want everyone to have a great look to the keyboard side okay can you see my screen okay so uh, i was wondering how does the keyboard works out okay so therefore i just found this fabulous video for all of you okay the daily life of a keyboard okay how does those keyboard keys work out so Let's just enjoy that. Um, Nasa, there's no sound. Okay, so we are having... Uh, um, when we you. click on the share, I think there's a button on that that says um, one tiny button we need to check to, to make it sound uh yeah i'm having it already or here the tech is already like marked and you see it's, it's already fine enough from my side can you hear it now <laughs> yes i heard it earlier Hey, Naza, you okay. can share, share the video with me and maybe I can share it on my side. Okay, okay, fine enough. So, so that's okay. I uh, just had a, a quick kind of uh, a kind of refreshment kind of thing for all of the students. So that's fine enough. Okay, so uh, we'll be having, this was actually a kind of like, you know, the common lifestyle of how does keyboard work. The space is one of the busiest person that you're having in the office, okay? So the same goes for the space button, okay? This is how it works out. So... Uh, we will be having this kind of uh, most of the time for refreshing all of your knowledge and all the stuff, just touching out the output, the the uh, the output devices, the hardware side for this initial lectures, and obviously then we'll be just forwarding into our later uh, software side as well. So um, uh, the skill section over here will be having to install a, uh, a SATA hard drives. Uh, in a computer, connect the drives to motherboard, plug the power connector from the power supply, as we discussed in our uh, motherboard, uh, motherboard like complete motherboard, we're just discussing these are for, 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 the, for the power connectors, for the PSU, power su supply unit. Uh, 
And obviously, we'll have to connect uh, drive to motherboard, and uh, we are having a plenty of more in this section. Okay. So the key terms today we are going to have to discuss is the typical HDD. We call it. These are the terms you have to you have to revise again and again. Okay. So if you're in the IT, you should know about these terms because you know whenever you just go for the discussion. They will never ever say, hey, do you know the solid state drive devices of this computer are fine and are not going to find their fault and all that stuff. They'll just go for these small terms, okay? So the best thing in IT is also to have to know uh, the full abbreviation of the uh, of the word, and then you can use it, obviously. If someone even asks you what is SSD, so obviously you should know that it is a solid state drive. So whenever you just come across the kind of uh, conversation and you come across kind of debate in the IT, you'll be having a lot of kind of these words. And you'll say, oh, I don't know what are these going. It's just out of my head. So once you have a kind of like a revision of the, of these of these terms and all the stuff, you will obviously contribute to that conversation, okay? So uh, uh, optical drive, flash storage, uh, SSDs, obviously, and the external hard drive disks, one of the most, most important thing, as we discussed earlier also, to always have the external backup drive, okay? You may have a lot in, like, uh, most of most of you, like, they were having, if you just follow the, 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 the chat of the Zoom, they were having Hitachi, they were having uh, Sony, they were having... Uh, uh, WD Western Digital, they were having uh, a lot of other vendors, recovery backup drives. So the reason is your laptop, your desktop, your cell phone, your, uh, your you can say all of these electronic devices, they are not guaranteed, okay? They're electronic devices, okay? They can be wipe, wipe up, they can be faulty anytime. So ex do not expect them to run for 20 years without any error. So it's the best thing to have your important uh, files into an external hard drive for backup, okay? Like in last organization, we call it disaster recovery, okay? Disaster recovery, recovery means that, for example, what if you were all like, let's suppose we were having a, a disaster recovery in our hotel industry, so whenever you just check in, like a bunch of people check in, like let's suppose 100 people or 200 people just check in at one time as a group. So what if the system is like down or the system's like hard drive is burnt out? So what you'll do, you'll just stop the check-in. That's obviously uh, one of the worst thing you'll, you'll face. You'll face a lot of stress over there, right? So to, to recover, it, and it, it, it have occurred several times, okay? It can occur in any kind of department. If you go to logistic, if you go to like, uh, if you go to the airport reception, if you go to healthcare system, just if you if you if you just go to any any department, they will have a kind of uh, situation that will they'll they'll be expecting a lot of crowd. So to avoid uh, like uh, the failure chances, you you must have disaster recovery plan. Okay. Let me also just tap for you people in the chat box. And um, it is called disaster recovery. This plan should always be available for all of you people, okay? Disaster recovery plan, okay? And most of them have like, for example, when those check-ins are like done, so you should have a ready-made system as a backup, okay? And whenever that system is like uh, not working fine or the hard drive is burnt out, you can just uh, plug out the cables and just plug in another uh, laptop or you can just have your backup system to keep the things running and just have kind of like, um, you can say a solution for that, uh, for that stress environment. So disaster recovery is one of the most, most important things you'll ever, ever be facing it right so uh, uh that's one thing for sure and obviously you'll also have the hard disk that external hard drive that we discuss about it the external hard disk drives it should be it, it, it can be of any we have also uh, uh let me share my screen we have one of them uh by the name of seagate trance and if you've heard about it 
Uh, that is one of the great on their shock proof. So I'd recommend like most of you to have those. If uh, if you're having uh, others one, that's totally perfect, fine, okay? So we have uh, over here, charts and This here, my screen, and I think you should be able to see it right away. Try to work here. I think you can see my screen right now, right? This is transcend. This, this is one of like, uh, uh, you can have it similar hard drives, by the way, whichever you just want to uh, see gate, Western digital to see bar. You can have, uh, you can have uh, OWC, you can have SanDisk, okay, WD, and the list goes on. HP, Adata, you have uh, uh, Oracle, StarTech. You have more than like 15, but these, these the, the one they have listed, these are one of the top when you're having it, okay? So this one is shop proof. If, if you just click on the uh, on the IDs, you can see um, the Transcend 4TP 3.1 generation one, you have type C connector over here. Storage it, it is uh, 25 meter with three array external hard drive. This is the model number you're having it. So uh, this is the capacity over here. If you see more this option, you will you will see uh, you will see the de details that they say uh, they say this is a completely shock roof over here, and uh, you can see the complete uh, the complete. You can say uh, the built-in process how this product was made. This is for the recovery. It should be on, and uh, these are some basic things you should know about it, okay? So these are portable, uh, these are portable transcend, and uh, very, very great for your external use, for your sensitive, sensitive documents, as always we discuss about it. If you're having something super sensitive, never ever leave a single copy of it. You should always have your personal, uh, your personal um, external hard drive, okay? Maybe you're having a picture memories of your family that are super, super important for you. Maybe you, you'll be having a lot of your documents that will be super important for you. So it's better to have a backup of those just for you, just in case some things like uh, very, very unfavorable goes on and uh, it, it, it can't be recovered. So it's best to have a copy of those sensitive documents, okay? So there are also colors, by the way, some... Uh, some a lot of colors. If you see, these are uh, double G red. These are double G uh, a blue, double G red plus, and you also have one green, and and the list goes on. Okay, so these colors also um, also have uh, like uh, like even if you compare that, this is eight terabyte, but still you're just having it uh, on one thirty dollars, right? But this is six TB you have to pay more price than, than the WD Blue. So the reason behind it is actually they have some premium features. Whenever you just go, the speed actually matters a lot, okay? The speed actually matters a lot. The RPMs matter a lot. The technology they have used matters a lot. So it is super important to note those features as well, okay? Whenever you do want to purchase just have a quick kind of brief, brief kind of search on that on the internet. Just compare that whenever should you, what, uh, what kind of hard drive should I purchase? What vendor should I go for? What are the user requirement or what are your requirement that you're purchasing? After all, you are the king, right? You're the customer, okay? So you you have to pay for for the things you're just uh, you're just buying it. So it's better to have something. Uh, super kind of you can say authentic and that that should actually um, the cost should define the feature they are providing to you that's the main point okay so always always go for the quality in the IT you have to maintain the quality that's super important you can have the same external hard drives like maybe in $50 okay but never ever do like uh, uh, these uh, those unauthentic kind of sourcing all the stuff it will 
they don't actually have the guarantee and all the stuff. They don't have kind of like um, a complete kind of support. There are software installed, a lot of things installed. They can troubleshoot most of them, but there are very like rare chances to have uh, a Western digital um, uh, external passport size, uh, we can say hard drive and you, you have totally blank out. Uh, like they have, they have written that the warranties, you cannot claim the warranty if it is broken or if it is burnt out. So there are some kind of like uh, restrictions from the vendor. And obviously that's one thing for sure. How can you recover a thing if a thing is already uh, already like broken, if it's like burnt out? It doesn't make sense, by the way. So uh, it is very, very important to know these details. Okay, super, super important and to know which vendor should I go for. You you have, uh, these are just for the external use. Remember, these are not SSDs, okay? These are a simple external hard drives you're having it. It's just a portable and, and for example, if you have like some kind of, uh, you can have, uh, if you want to recover some kind of data and all the stuff, you just have to plug in and you just copy that and that's finished. You're not going to use the entire day for it, okay? So this is one thing you should always, always uh, be aware of, and you should know that uh, how to use these hard drives, okay? So uh, uh, we also have the, uh, the, the uh, hard drive, the normal hard drive that we are using, we call it HDD, hard disk drive. And HD is obviously for short, uh, for short. So uh, for now on, you will be like having these kind of uh, terms, okay? So if you if you just see on any uh, on any webinar, any conference, or some people, the IT people are like using it. So you can uh, uh, you can have that uh, you can have that complete. Uh, uh, you can say you can just write it down. Okay, you, you should you should know the complete definition of that uh, that word. Okay, you should okay. If someone is like asking about SSD, so it means it is solid state drive. Now this thing should be like fitted in your mind. Okay, if if the conversation goes on, you you have to use that. Being a good communicator in IT is one uh, is one of the most important things. You know that's one thing. Uh, the reason behind it, you, you'll, you'll face every kind of user, okay? Even uh, you'll see a very low kind of people on your job, a very high CEO level, even people, they don't know about the IT. The IT is a technical field. So if you go for any field, you have to, uh, you have to go for it, okay? You have to use it. So uh, the HDD is the most common type of long-term storage. As we discussed, we have two kind of storages. We have temporary, that is RAM or uh, cache. Uh, those are all uh, the temporary storages. But for long term, if you want to save your file and all the stuff, you'll have to go to. You'll have to save your file for your hard disk, your C drive, D drive, E drive. Okay, those are the long term storage devices that you're having. It okay, long term storage drives. That, that uses thick magnetic uh, disks uh, uh, in case in a protective housing to store data. So normally those hard drives, HSD drives, we are talking about HDD drives, uh, hard disk drive, the typical older version of drives, they were actually like, they are still using now in the servers and all the stuff. Uh, they have a strong casing type, okay? That's to protect them. They are not shock proof, okay? Uh, and maybe whenever you just want to place a PC, uh, a desktop computer, make sure it is on a plain service, okay? So if it's like, if it's like tilted, if it is like not uh, fine enough, you will have a hard drive crash very soon, remember that. Because the spin that they're having in the HDD, it, it will obviously damage your hard drive and you have to replace that. And maybe there may be like, you cannot even recover your data. So it is very, very important to know that your, uh, your desktop is like, uh, it, it's totally on a plane, uh, on, on, on a plane floor, okay? It's not like tilted, it's not like uh, on wrong dimension, okay? We have optical drive, a storage device that uses a light instead of, my, uh, 
magnetism to store information. This includes Ethereum, DVDRAM, obviously. The, these have been almost replaced, okay? The CD and the Ethereum, are, like, they are almost replaced by, uh, by flash drives, by, by online streaming devices. So normally in older days, we would like having those DVDs for the movies and all that stuff. Uh, these days we are actually having, uh, uh, we are actually, uh, we are having like, uh, uh, we are having this uh, uh, Netflix online uh, for movies and all this stuff. We have YouTube that's also on, on the web. So you don't need to download the movies and all the stuff, okay? You have all those international vendors that they are they are having, they are charging you and they're having, they have just vanished those CD room and DVD room concept, okay? Even at the operating system, uh, the operating system like their, uh, the operating system like installation was done through DVD or CD-ROM, they are also vanished, okay? Now, the company just like, for example, the Dell or the Microsoft just provide you a flash drive and they say, hey, this is the flash drive. You can just install your operating system from this and uh, you don't need any CD-ROM and you don't need any DVD-ROM for that. So it's still like uh, in a very age, so maybe like five to 10% the uh, the life of uh, a CD room and DVD room is like still in place, but like 90% is like wipe out from, uh, from most of the country. So uh, the flash drive, one of the most compact portable storage device that is a special memory chip to store data. We have uh, eight, 16, 32 gig and 64 gig, 128 and 256. And the list goes on even to terabyte. We are having uh, flash storage devices for quick kind of uh, or portability of our files. Within, uh, like you can, you cannot, uh, you cannot like share those things. You cannot like do through online. It will, it will take time, or maybe you're having complication that time. So the flash drive is really, uh, it's it, it help you for. Uh, for for a short period of time, so you can have your uh, your like day day to day tasks, files, and all the stuff also in flash drive to to move around one system to another from uh, from desktop to laptop, from laptop to cloud, and all the stuff. So it's a kind of like uh, you were very um, uh, you can say uh, good old friend you're having the in case of the flash drive. So. Um, this is um, these are the key definitions that you're having it. The solid state drive, one of the most uh, most important technology that these days it uh, actually like give you kind of um, you can say fast speed and all the stuff. Uh, comparing to the normal HDD, it is like super super fast. Okay, so. Uh, uh, a device with similar capacity to an HDD that it is flash storage instead of magnetic disk to store uh, data. SSDs are much faster and more durable than hard drive, uh, but usually are more expensive. So the cost is actually one of the biggest factor that actually um, separates the HDD and the SSD from one another. But still, it is in process. So the more it is like uh, it's like developed, it's like made. To public available, so obviously the cost will be decreasing day from day to day. So uh, this is one thing for sure. SSD has almost like changed the perspective. We were looking into um, the HDD era. It is super super fast, and, um, and you're having like more power. Like you're saving the time. You're having an efficient access to your drive files to 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 the applications. And it changed everything. Okay, the 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 efficiency of your of your of your local drive. It changes everything. Even if it is your cell phone, if you can have like faster storages or more RAM, you're having at your cell phone. Everything looks different, right? So the same case is obviously with the with the uh, with a desktop with your laptop. Always, always recommend uh, if you're if you're going so if you're having to purchase a, a kind of simple desktop for you, this is one of the most common question you'll be, you'll you'll be encountering with it. Okay, that's why. Uh, so uh, the question they always ask is to, um, and they'll they'll ask you that uh, what about um, what kind of what kind of uh, uh, what kind of desktop should I purchase? So uh, to simply answer that, you just have to look into the user budget or 
it may be your friend, it may be your relative, it may be your neighbor, it may be your uh, your office colleague guy. It, they are everywhere, okay? Everyone needs laptop, everyone needs actual desktop, okay? And obviously they'll reach you out. So to give a kind of, uh, kind of like a kind of professional response to them, always, always tell them to select SSD instead of HDD and to have at least 16 gig of RAM with uh with the letter with with no uh with no like old generation than eight or maybe seven they can it, it depends on the requirement so the the better they are obviously if if they're having a 13 generation that's more than fine okay you're having state of the art machine right so like normally people just like uh they they say okay I, I can just go for the normal one I have this kind of budget so they can just stick with uh with the, with eight with uh, with seven, something like that, with with, with kind of SSD and uh, 16 gig of RAM. Uh, so these are the most like um, important, you can say, um, you can suggest me how to provide them so they can, uh, so they can always remember you. Okay, that's one thing for sure. Okay. Okay, so um, an external hard drive is an SSD that can be connected as a peripheral to a computer. So it is a peripheral. Remember, your external device is actually a peripheral, okay? So let's just quickly uh, like uh, see a few of the um, external devices we are having it. Uh, we have also uh, seen, uh, let's just have of SSD, okay? That is up to two terabyte. Okay. So this is the Let's share my screen. I think you should be able to see it. Just hide this so, so whenever you want to purchase whenever you want to purchase your you can see my screen right whenever you want to purchase your 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 external uh your external ssds so they have uh they have few one of the most important like uh features okay if you see over here of the SanDisk, you have two terabyte extreme portable SSD up to 1050 megabytes per second, okay? These, uh, these are like, um, you have to look, you, you have to watch out for the speed, okay? That is one thing like super, super cool in these, uh, in these hard drives, okay? And this is actually what, what makes you separate from the other people, okay? If you go over here, it, it tells you it is dust resistant, it is water resistant, it is portable, and obviously it has a feature like hardware encryption, okay? That's one thing for, for like they have, uh, they have given you a lot, of, a lot of choices, okay? They have given you a lot of features in that. So uh, uh, these are the things that you have to uh, you have to check in, and you you can see those uh, those marvelous features. Okay, uh, this actually makes you different. Whenever you want to select that, so you have to look for. If you go for the Samsung, that's also okay. If you go for the SanDisk, you can have the user be one of the most most important things. Okay, of crucial. If you just see over here, this is four terabyte of crucial. So. Uh, if you can see, is go 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 for 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 the details over here. You are having it. Uh, you are having it. Uh, including crucial uh, X9 Pro portable SSD, USB C cable C cable already over here. Components Milo photos redemption code. So uh, it is obviously for using for the gaming specific uses for the product is obviously the gaming. So there are people like they say, hey, just recommend me something like. How can I do that for the gaming purposes? So you have to you have to know those mentors. That that, that that's the thing when when uh, when they help uh, when, when you can help out in uh, in a very fine manner. Okay, so it's used for laptop, gaming console, tablet, camera, and all that stuff. You can see over here, and you can see all the details over there. And obviously, if you go for the Samsung, these are the three main vendors that we have selected. 
So, uh, so this is one thing of uh, Samsung and uh, we will be obviously, we will we'll stick to our plan. So we will not go more later than um, than two or that's for sure, okay? So we are committed to our time. Uh, we'll just be stick to our plan. We're just doing something practical. That's why you have to know that this is, this is actually the thing that you can easily like uh, dissolve uh, in yourself. This is something that you can, you can have use of it, okay? So the main difference of you and a common user is that you know those vendors, you know the specification, you know you, you have surfed that in in real time, you know the differences, and this is what makes you actually different from the from from your earlier version. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the 3D flash drives. Let's just uh, uh, jump out directly to our storage types over here. Um, one of the, uh, like if you have seen in the servers, you, you can see these lights over here uh, for the server. Maybe most of you like uh, they have, uh, uh, they have, uh, yeah, they have experience of server room. They have experience of the racks, of server racks and all the stuff. But it's just like, uh, like, uh, like the Facebook server room. If you can Google that, you can see there are a lot of big computers running, a lot of lightings over there, they're all already green and all that stuff. There are four lights in IT. Remember, we have discussed again, I'll just remind you people, there are four lights, okay? Green means everything is perfectly fine. So whenever you see an IT equipment and you see a green light in any kind of thing, it means something is going right. There's nothing to worry about it. You have yellow, you have orange, and obviously then you have the red one, okay? The yellow means uh, you should look into an error. It can turn into orange uh, anytime. And obviously uh, the orange means uh, it is uh, it is time to, to have a keen interest. You have to fix me, okay? Else I'll go to the red, uh, red light and the red light means you have to replace me, okay? If it is a hard drive, you have to replace the hard drive. If it is an equipment, it is an AC, it is like a, a kind of... Uh, hardware uh, hardware part you have to replace or you have to repair that then it will work so you should always always know these four lights in it okay green yellow orange red okay always always pick up the things in uh, green and follow up in yellow sometimes they are replaced by white that's also okay but uh, orange and red are the same in each of the equipments so always, always avoid that. And if you see that, you have to troubleshoot ASAP. In a, in, in a very few minutes, we'll be just jumping out to discuss the art of troubleshooting, okay? How can we uh, have, how can we be an artist to troubleshoot the IT equipment? So today is one of the most, most important lecture how to be an artist of uh, and how to be a great troubleshooter in the IT field, okay? I'll be sharing my uh, more than 15 years of experience having all those troubleshooting tactics and all the stuff. So we'll be having a very great, great time over here, uh, the art of troubleshooting, okay? So uh, these are the hard drive disk in a server room, right? Um, obviously, we will not configure that in your very initial state. Uh, when you just like go for uh, for the advanced level, you go for the for this like experience and all the stuff. You may then encounter such kind of uh, ranks and all the stuff. So um, these are actually the rack rays of hard drives, and we call it the uh, the RAID redundant array of independent disk. Okay. It is just for your information. It's not to, uh, uh, it is just for your redundant array of independent disk, we call it, okay? So uh, we'll be just having it just for your information. So uh, it will not come like in your ITIF exam and all the stuff, but you should know that these are the technologies. So in that technology, they actually combine four to five hard drives and they represent as a one hard drive. So how cool is that if you have like three to four houses and you just like name it as a one house, as a one community, that's how they do in the software side. We'll just look into that in a later uh, session if you just call time for us. So just configure also, okay? So uh, these are the uh, earlier version we were having it, the HDD. 
uh, hard disk drive. This is actually the small kind of data reader that you're having it, a super small little. Uh, the reason I was talking to place your desktop computer in a plain surface is due to this error. A lot of people were having it, okay? So when you when you make that tilted, you make that in wrong in wrong direction. This spinning, uh, this spinning drive actually like uh, it it actually creates problem for this uh, for this reader, okay? And that's when it uh, when it damages this, and obviously you'll just lose your data if it's not on the same place, okay? So uh, that's one thing for sure. You should know about it, and you should be very very keen. This is actually the uh, older technology. These days we are having SSDs and uh, these are the optical drive uh, for CD and DVD rooms, okay? Uh, this is how we obviously, um, uh, you have been, uh, most of you have like experienced this, uh, how to put a DVD, I cannot, uh, I cannot show like how, you know, how to put the LCD, or, uh, the CD or the DVD, you have a small kind of plastic kind of thing and you have to plug that and you have to small, slowly and gradually put that into the DVD room. That's not obviously, you have the experience of that, of, of those technologies, it's almost absolute these days, okay? So um, very rare, everything is on the cloud, everything is on internet, so you don't have to worry about it. They are making things more uh, simpler and easy for us, okay? So um, this is your good old friend, the flash drive, one of the most commonly used, you can say the secret, the secret is secretive, you can have a drive ever you will have thousands and thousands of verbal communication in this drive, photos, files, maybe a person have just fight with his boss and he has just like grab all his files in, the, in this small flash drive and you'll say, I'll never ever back you until you just give me the promotion and all the stuff. I'm just kidding, okay? But this super, super uh, flash drive is one of the most important drive we are having it. And it's a very good friend, by the way. We have used that. It's been a super cooperative and um, the, this guy is just making things easier for us. That's for sure, okay? So uh, you can you can see that. And uh, and by the way, um, there are tricks, okay? Uh, I just, uh, just reminded a very great kind of informative uh, thing to you people. So there are tricks uh, in most countries, in most like big countries. So uh, what people do, what hackers do, they just throw a flash drive, okay, in a super, super busy era, uh, like maybe a kind of office or, or maybe a financial banking system or something like that in front of them. So if an employee is just walking away and he say, hey, I, I found a flash drive, and they just pick that. So if he just entered that flash drive to the computer, you, uh, I am 110 percent sure that maybe uh, they we can have a ransomware that your computer will be like totally locked. You have to pay a money for that, or maybe your complete you um, you may you may be having a, a virus so that your com complete computer can be tracked and uh, you you'll not be even aware of it. And maybe from your account, they can just have the financial transaction and all this stuff. So being in the IT, it is super important to know the importance of how little things can trigger big events, okay? Those small little things, these kind of like small, uh, uh, you can say, uh, a carelessness that uh, most of us like are having it, it should be avoided, okay? If you're if you're working for some financial uh, organization or some uh, you're working like even for your own self, you should always protect your financials, always, always from from the viruses, from from the fraud and all the stuff. So once you know about social engineering, cyber phishing, ransomware, we'll just discuss that also in our later session. So you should always be aware of these little tricks also, okay? So never ever pick a USB drive if they're, if you have just found on the street, okay? So um, never ever just directly plug into your main system machine. Can everyone just 
um, just give me a confirmation of this oath that net that they will never ever get um, a, a free USB drive. They'll never ever get that plug into their system. Can anyone just give me a confirmation of that? Okay, Tayo, thank you so much. So I think you're just com you you just con confirmed. Okay, that's great. That's great for you. That that's okay. So that's one thing. Okay, that's that's great. Obviously, um, you lot assume that you'll be having a uh, hundred bitcoins on that, on that flash drive. You will never ever see that. Okay, it's 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 long gone. Okay, so be very very uh, be very very kind of uh, uh, be very very kind of careful of your system. Okay, that's great, Julius. Thank you so much for your response. That's great. Thank you so much. So. Uh, this is one uh, very informative. Obviously, if you have a camera, uh, the, the DSLR, you know, all those digital cameras. So uh, you may have seen uh, this kind of uh, uh, SSD protective drive that, that, that they have a small also memory card over here. So you can have, uh, you can see that uh, on uh, on your laptops, you have uh, you have a specific port, by the way, for, for these. Um, for these cameras, pictures, you can just extract that and you can just have that on your computer, right? And this is our good old friend SSD, okay? You can see the speed over here. The normal HDD is like having maybe a thousand of, uh, above the thousand speed and they say, hey, you know, we have like 890 MB per second speed. But when it's come to SSDs, they have NGBs, okay? This one is like six, gigabytes per second that's one that, that that's actually the thing that make that that make you like a super a super fine nothing's like hanging on and everything is like working perfectly fine so uh things are like uh super super great for us and they are like fine enough for us to be processed okay okay so the external storage we have discussed about, this is the memory card in most of your, uh, in your, uh, in most of your like cameras, uh, most of your small devices, CCTVs, IT uh, equipments, uh, you have that, okay, in your tablets, even cell phones. So uh, you have, uh, you have this small friend, the memory card and, um, the memory card and it is uh, like for long-term storage we have the hard disk drive you have optical drive fly storage devices external storage devices and obviously the solid state drives okay now let's just move on uh, to to files and uh, systems uh, this is how your files look like if it's in binary it's not converted into uh, something that's understandable for you so normally your files and file systems, it actually have all those zeros and ones, okay? So uh, they are communicator like the DNS, okay? You don't have to know the IP address of google.com. You just type, hey, what? You just just, uh, just give me uh, Facebook or just give me Google, just give me Instagram. You don't know the, but behind the scene, actually they have a complete IP address for google.com. That's, you, you can also, you can also just type and you can also see what's the IP of google.com. They'll just tell you that this is the IP address of google.com. So you can, uh, this DNS actually convert that for you. These zeros and ones are actually converted for you. And you have like your own query and your simple plan uh, text, okay? Normally a picture is like, this is the complete uh, pixel data that you're having it. And you have a metadata. Metadata is means a data within data, okay? Uh, what does it mean? Like for example, if it's a picture, so the data of picture is actually called metadata, okay? Uh, so in metadata, we have the location of picture, we have the size, we have the compression techniques, we have the the location, we have obviously the name who has uh, got in the picture and all the stuff. That's all our metadata, okay? So you should always know this name. Uh, this one, for sure, it's a very great uh, terminology, the metadata, okay? So uh, this is a file name, uh, never gonna give you up. 
dot mp3 it's actually an extension file extension or type and obviously you can rename that you can name whatever you want and obviously this borderline that you are having it from the dot so it uh, turns into an extension it, it can be bit like for example this one is mp3 it's an audio file you all know about it it can be a video file of mp4 it can be uh a kind of uh, text file like txt, it can be a word file, okay, it can be any file. Uh, so after the dot, you should know that, okay, something has changed, it's image file, it's text file, it's audio file, or it is a video file. We have others also always know after the dot, we have the extension of that text, okay? Like image extensions are like jpg, uh, GIF obviously and PNG. We have audio extensions of uh, MP3, Wave, uh, WMA obviously, and MP4, AVI, and uh, Windows Movie Maker. We have WMV obviously. That's the video extensions we are having. That okay. The directory file is actually uh, where uh, where this file is like uh, re resided. So if it is in music. Uh, the file name is obviously uh, the music. The extension is obviously the, the those directly. It was created on on thirteenth or eleventh uh, of thirteenth. You can see the read and write. You can only having write option and also having uh, read and write option. And obviously the location is like in the um, in the system uh, name. The this is how a complete file looks like. You just go like hey, just go to music folder, just double click on that and just uh, grab uh, our um, just grab our like um, file and all the stuff. Okay, so uh, this is how your C folder look like. Um, this is how your uh, OS, uh, like your main C folder, uh, uh, look like. Okay, and these are these are the folders you may be having. And if you want to go to like happy to you, if you click on that, and then you obviously you'll have to have those complete directory. This is how you proceed with it. Okay, so uh, we'll be just uh, we'll be just having. Uh, uh, 532 was the difference of NTFS, HFS plus. We have also an extension for. So uh, for the meantime, uh, we will be having a quick break of uh, seven minutes from now on, and um, uh, just stay and um, just stay with the session. And we'll be just uh, having uh, a fresh air, a cup of uh, tea, coffee, and you can just have a quick uh, look into the previous lecture also. And we'll be just having our, our, we'll be just resuming our session after some minutes, okay? Thank you, Naza. So let's take a five minutes break. I'll, we'll be back 1.05 Central Time.
And while we're waiting and um, doing a break, I'm going to send the WhatsApp link. Please, if you are not on that link, kindly join the link. It's a great link. We're going to be sharing some good information there. So just be part of that community. It's pretty cool. We can easily reach out to you anytime. So please join the WhatsApp community for sure. And I just sent the link out. Just go free and um, join the community. And also make sure you are aware we would never call you and ask you to share a pin or anything like that. So let's be aware of uh, malicious actors. There are many scammers out there. So make sure you are not victim of scammers. We would never call you and ask for your WhatsApp pin or a Zoom pin. Um, so just be very mindful. Thank you. Have a copy. We have two more minutes to go. And today, I promise after today's class, um, I will spend five minutes to go through the learning management system. A lot of you have pinged me to ask about it. If you registered for the program, automatically you have access to everything. So we try to upload all the materials. Make sure you go to academy.skillwe.com. When you registered, you got an email. Make sure you go to that email and ensure you have access. Everything is there. That's the best place to get all your materials anytime. The video recordings will be there. The materials will be there. Every one of the artifacts we use for these sessions will be there. Um, just give us within 24 hours after each class. We should have it ready for you all. So just be mindful of that. Um, Somebody said the website. It's the same place you register, but I'm going to send it right now. Academy.skillweed.com. So feel free to jump on that. Academy.skillweed.com. All right. Thank you, everybody. I think uh, let me stop sharing and um, over to you, Naza, when you're ready. Grab a coffee for the final one hour. Yeah, thank you so much. So uh, let's just uh, jump out to our, our session of uh, File allocation tile 32, and obviously the new technology file system and TFS and HCFS plus and auth extension for. So um, one of the most important things that we are going to experience are, are the hard drive files up there. Okay. That's like you have to know uh, which files we use for, for the most common files. So we have the file system features over here. The compression means that uh, if something is like, let's suppose if it's a file like in a regular size of 10 MB or 20 MB, you know, suppose if it's a, a simple uh, picture, you all have been struggling with this feature, like some of the websites there, they are having it, um, a confirmed kind of like file type size, okay? They may say, hey, I just want five MB of file, okay? I don't need, uh, the file should not be greater than five MB, like the profile, pictures for most of the website and all this stuff. So you have to compress that, okay? If you have 20 MB of file, you have to compress that by going to paint, by going to a tool, by going to online uh, uh, web pages. We have a lot of like tools and all the stuff on, on the web that compress it for you, okay? So make sure you're having the safest way. You can have that the best way is to 
to use uh, the Microsoft built-in uh, application. We are having MS Paint. You can just open your picture in that and you can just decrease the pixels, the horizontal and the vertical both one. When you, when you decrease that, they'll decrease the size. And obviously the PNG is one of the most recognizable for all of the, uh, the uh, profile personal pictures and all the stuff you can easily compress over there. So it's just to know you people, how does the compression work? This is how you reduce the file size, okay? When you have larger pixels, if you just click on any kind of picture over here in any picture and you can see the pixel, let me just show this one uh, in a real time. So we uh, we can actually have the experience of this, okay? This is uh, like something important. We should know about it. And we should know uh, the, we, we should know like the, uh, the, the features, how can we, uh, how can we have, uh, can we reduce those pictures? How can we, um, how can we compress those, okay? So uh, this is one single picture. I've just, uh, I've just a random select over here. This is a very random picture uh, and they are not trying to show me over here. But uh, I'll just try my little best. Let's see. Okay, great. I think you can see this uh, uh, this this picture, right? It's like uh, mqdefault.jpg, okay? So uh, joint photographic proof is actually the abbreviation for the JPG. So these are the properties. If you just right click on any picture, you'll see all these properties, okay? The file size for this is 5.50 KB kilobytes, okay? but you may have a larger one, okay? Like in MBs, you can have the more pixels you are having it, the more uh, space it will occupy, okay? So you have to re reduce this by going to, by seeing these pixels over here, okay? But let's say you'll say it, it, it requires like eight KB of my disk drive. And that's like so much KB. But by the way, if you just go for larger pixels coming in, all the stuff, the people that are having video editing, audio editing, they are well aware of it. How can you compress that? How can you reduce this file size? If you go for the security, that's okay. We are having the same security over here. If you go for the details over here, you can see the details, the dimensions over here, okay? This is the width. We are having 320 pixels by 180 pixels, okay? And uh, this is the uh, dots per inch. We are having the horizontal resolution and the vertical resolution of uh, over here, the bit rate is always 24. We have not used any compression technique on this picture, so it's just blank. The resolution is blank, color representation, we're having it. You can also have, if, you have, if you're like having a digital camera and all that stuff, they can also show you all these attributes. Camera maker, maybe in the con, maybe Canon, maybe a Sony, it can be any camera maker, okay? The model they'll just say, okay, this is the uh, Sony DX100. You can, uh, they can say the the, uh, the exposure time, the ISO speed, expo exposure, uh, and we also have the focal length, max aperture, and the list goes on. Like they have a lot of attributes, a lot. to so the people that are having in the, in the photography uh, field, that's also somehow attached to the IT field. This is what actually in IT is like. You can go to any field. If you know the basics, if you know if your foundation is strong enough, you can just switch on to just, just you can touch any field, okay? And you can be super good at that, okay? So over here, you can see all those attributes. You can see all those, the date was created like it was created on, uh, on 6, 12, 23, that even they can also give you the time, okay? 8, 27 p.m., right? And this is, uh, this is how you see all these attributes and all the stuff. So this is something super, super important. You should always, always, always be mindful. And you can see also the previous version if you have changed that. Since we don't have, so that's why we, it's blank over here. But the details tab and the general tabs, both are super important, okay? Over here, you can see the size and the details. You can see the dimensions. So you can cut off these dimensions, okay? You can right click on it. You can make, hey, I don't want 320 pixels. I want 120 pixels by maybe by 80 or by 70. So you, this is how when you cut off pixels, you cut off the size, okay? So this is something, that, this was something like uh, really, really, um, 
three address, so you should know about it, okay? The compression and the encryption is all about, uh, the encryption is all about how to, uh, to hide your information from the third uh, uh, unauthorized person, from the person that are not like authorized to give you information. You can also see that on your WhatsApp messages, whenever you have your initial chat with uh, your colleague, your friend, your family member, you can see the, the, the WhatsApp they have written, this is end-to-end -end encryption. It means only you and only the other person. Even Facebook is also not allowed, even those vendors are not allowed to read your messages. That's against your privacy, okay? That's a human right, okay? Uh, although uh, there are violations of it, but to be honest, it's like, it's your fundamental right, okay? So you should first know about your fundamental right, okay? That's for sure. Uh, we, we are also having the permissions. Uh, you can have, you can share the pictures, you can share uh, the file, the folder uh, to read and write, like as we described in our earlier lecture, uh, you can have only the read option to be open for all of the user. You can have the read and write and the copy and the delete, and you can have all control permissions. So you have a lot of permissions. This permission tab is super, super sensitive, okay? So when you go for larger organization, maybe you can only, uh, you, you may be only giving permissions to sell department, okay? So uh, none of the other departments should be able to access that folder. Maybe you're giving the permission to finance department. So that's super sensitive, uh, uh, like uh, features in the finance department, super sensitive documents. Only and only the authorized finance or the accounting people should be able to access that folder, okay? And uh, and update that, to read that, delete that, write that, and all the stuff. So permissions are one of the key uh, contributor uh, in the IT, remember that, okay? By just a single permission, you can just make your job like one of the worst thing you have done, okay? That's one thing for sure. So always, always like get the permission from your supervisor, from your department head, or from your CFO, CEO, CTO, so you can just uh, you can just write, hey, should I give this guy a permission to delete all the uh, accounting folders and files? And they'll ask you, so which department he is? You'll just say, hey, this is from uh, like uh, like from purchasing department or from sales department. So why would a sales department person have an access to accounting department? So um, this is one thing for sure, never ever do that, do all the relevant jobs and all the stuff you're having it. And uh, journaling, we are having it, limitations and the naming rules, obviously, uh, these are some uh, common file system features. Always, always avoid uh, the, the slashes, okay? Whenever you go for the file system, they'll never accept that, okay? And these are the special characters, the disk fragmentation, um, this is how you actually have a complete view of, uh, like you want, uh, uh, you want, uh, you want to merge uh, the same category files into one file, and you want them to quickly be accessed. Obviously, you'll have the use of disk fragmentation, and that's already a feature in your Windows. You can just right click on your left bottom corner. You can just say disk defragmentation. When you click on that, you'll uh, you will have that, and they can give you an extra feature of slight kind of speed in your system. Okay, and uh, obviously um, the uh, the SSD actually doesn't require this disk fragmentation. Actually, the hard drive that we were having it, uh, they were supposed to be uh, in the disk fragmentation uh, uh, like process. Okay, so. Uh, uh, you have to install a SATA uh, serial attached technology attached devices in uh, in your computer, create volumes, format drives, perform disk maintenance. These are a few things. Always, always delete those uh, temp um, uh, temporary files in your disk drives. That's not uh, uh, what you're going to um, be. Uh, for example, if you're not using it for a long time, you just have to go to your control panel. Uh, you run uh, disk press. The Windows key and R, when you press that, just type the percentage icon and press TMP. And again, percentage, I can just type this command to you people. So you don't, you don't have to do it right now, okay? So never ever do uh, for, for the temp storage, we have, you have to press, uh, 
Windows key, okay. Uh, press Windows key along with with R to have uh, to have a run in your system. This is a program. When you have that, you just have to press the percentage tab with a percentage icon. So when you press both of these, you will see a list of junk files that are not used. You can easily just have a control A and delete them. Not now, okay? After the session, maybe. So uh, these are the disk maintenance things, okay? If you're not using something, just close that. Why are you leaving like 35 tabs of Chrome in your laptop, in your system? It will slow down the process. So if you're not using something, just close down. Do not be overburdened on your, uh, on your laptop, on your system. Uh, it may also have, uh, uh, you can say the life uh, of your IT equipments may also be super decreased if you're not looking for that, okay? So uh, uh, how is the storage different than memory? How are they similar? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each storage medium? And uh, how does the uh, storage relate to input, output, and processing? So there are a lot of uh, discussion. I'll be also like, uh, will be discussing those things also. So uh, for now on, I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, uh, you, you can have this as your homework. You can just type in what are the disadvantages and advantages of SSD, uh, HDD, hard disk drive, and SSD, solid state drive. You can have a very simple, uh, you can say differences, you can know about it. We have discussed about vendors. We know about uh, SSDs are super fast than the normal hard drives. We know that they are super cool. They can have a lot of program like processed in a very limited time comparing to HDD. We have discussed about vendors also. Uh, so these are some important things. This is how you, uh, you make your ground. This is how you make difference like uh, in, in the crowd. So. Uh, just stick into those terms, stick into, um, into, uh, into the things we have discussed. Um, uh, so we're just having uh, Sarakin over here, just uh, for a little while, and we're just uh, joining soon. Uh, you with us? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. All right. Yeah, let me just stop my screen sharing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, and um, thank you so much, Naza. So as always, folks, we're going to do a quick Kahoot quiz. But before we do the Kahoot quiz, we'll just share a video real quick that we thought was really nice. And we do that all the time to kind of put things in perspective. Very important for us because many times when we talk about IT, if there is anything Naza and I achieve in this journey with you is to always remember that IT aligns a lot with business. There's no IT without business. Think about it. In five decades ago or more, or six decades ago, guess what? All our accounting practices were done manually, right? So everybody used papers to do our journal entry, account payable, account receivable. That was the way the life, the world was, right? And those days, right, we're talking about using chips for all these huge computers right now. Now, business drives everything. IT makes business much more efficient. That's the reality. As a matter of fact, when you get into IT, you realize what they call us. They call us like cost centers, meaning you are constantly incurring costs for the business, right? They kind of look at you like you don't have value. All you do is my server is down. Okay, buy server. My network is, there's a new network out there. Buy. So they look at us like just buy, 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 buy people, right? Recently, they are beginning to appreciate IT more because with cybersecurity threat, people are now realizing, okay, you can't just have the attitude like before, right? That these guys are just incurring cost because it can impact business big time now. So one of the challenges in leadership, especially, is that how do you discuss with the board that is approving your budget or money that you want new equipment? They're going to ask you, okay, why? You're yeah, just not going to tell me, well, this is the newest thing in town. And to be honest, a lot of people just do it because that's the new thing in town. So it's important to understand. Can we all can we all type this? Do me a favor. Can we all type and say, um, "Business decision impacts IT." Can we all type it together? Business impacts IT. Can we all type it? 
you must always remember that. Don't forget that. Please, if you remember, you know what, I'm making you guys so much seasoned. I would like you to also type four things. Don't worry. Just an exercise to get, keep us in perspective, okay? Because at the end of the day, we are not raising technicians. We are not raising guys that are just doing some bunch of work. Because the truth is after a while, honestly, you, you start realizing, okay, I, I can't be called technical forever because after a while, most of us start getting older and you realize it's a younger generation game. You know, you can't catch up as AI now. So you need to be more strategic, right? So businesses and IT, four key things that will be that will drive it eventually. When you are doing, if you understand business, can we all type number one, process? Can we type process real quick? Just type process, everybody, if you don't mind, just type process. And I'll tell you where I'm going with this in a second. Just type process, okay? Process is just saying, at the end of the day, even if you are doing IT, right, we have to have process. Um, Naza earlier on talked about disaster recovery, right, earlier on. So it means if there's a disaster, how do we recover? There should be a documentation, a process to list it. I'm not going to wait for disaster to happen before I start developing a strategy to recover, right? Let's go to the next one. The next one, and everything I'm talking right now, honestly, if you know this, mentally you are set because you can always tie together. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one, I just want us to type technology real quick. Technology. And technology is what we've been talking about, right? We're talking about hard drive, all the different um, drives out there, enablers, softwares, application, blah, 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 all those good stuff. Now, the third one I want to sneak in real quick is people. Can we all type people real quick? People. Because at the end of the day, if you have processes divine, defined, you have the technology, you need people, right? People means we have to hire people at the end of the day. Then the final one I was sneaking, just type the word governance. Governance. Governance is just the overarching um, oversight of what we do. The meetings, if there's a risk, if there's threats, if there are issues, who addresses it, who follows up. So let's hold those four in our piggyback for a second. All right, let's do a quick watch of a very exciting video that we just thought um, it's a really nice one to put it in business format in our mindset. Very short, but very nice one. My hands smell like stew for weeks. Oh, look, my new laptop is here. Hey, what happened to your old one? You know, on the way to work, I jump out of the car to grab a churro from that gal in the corner. I turn my back for like two minutes. Gone. Stolen. Or uh, maybe I forgot to bring it. I'm not sure which. Wait, did you get IT to wipe it remotely? No, I know how this goes. The minute they wipe it, it turns up under my bed or something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a few days, see if it turns up. Good. And I might have disabled the security software in the computer anyway. It slows it down. You've got to be kidding me. I do not remember ordering a mesh tank top. Hmm. Too much whiskey and Dave shops a little frisky, right? <laughs> Ooh. Huh? Huh? Did you order it? Come on, you know this looks great. Let's see about this big one. Dave, it's, uh, this it's like Christmas. I'm pretty sure someone is making purchases using your online accounts well, that are still logged in on your browsers. Well, lucky for me, they can't change the address. Some of the stuff is pretty great. You need to call IT and change your logins ASAP. I'm getting a new wardrobe, and I like it. I'm gonna ride this out and see where it goes. Maybe there's a motorbike in receiving. Check it out. He just really goes through life like that, huh? Mm-hmm. Do you think he knows he has to pay for all that stuff? Not a chance. All right, all right, everybody. That was great. Um, you know, please, even though we are IT people, we need to be very conscious, right? A little decision that is reckless can really cause a lot of chaos. Um, that was a good example. He was enjoying all these orders and realized forgot that it's probably maybe been... uh so so maybe um uh, he has not actually seen his credit card. Okay, so when when exactly. this arrived, and obviously it's for sure that maybe five thousand or maybe ten thousand dollars just gone through another person. So that's for oh, sure boy. thing. You just have to be super careful of your finances. That's what we always stress on. Super super careful. Thank you for sharing such a insightful video for all of us. Sure, sure. And uh, um, Nata, should I go ahead and do the first scout? Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Okay. All right, folks. Welcome to our new our scout. As always, we have one scout to go real quick. It's going to be fun. Let's just do one. 
and just make a good attempt to see if we can um, get some fun out of this and juggle your brain a little bit. So I'm going to share my screen. If you don't know, um, for most of us, if this is your first time, just go to kahoot.it. Very simple, kahoot.it. Um, so let me share my screen and start the Kahoot. So, and I will share the code with us real quick. The code is, it's loading. All right, let's go free mode. All right, the pin number is 609129. 609129. And I just sent it to the larger group real quick. 609129. Kahoot is a gamification system we use. Just quickly log in real quick. It's just some very short questions. Team Monster, Team Unicorn, Team Panda. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got, people. And if you guys want us to change the name of our we can change them also but let's keep it this way for now all right let's give everybody else another 10 seconds and we get started now some of the questions you might say well have we touched this but most of them you should be able to figure it out real quick all right let's get to 80 then we kick off good job folks please i encourage you make sure you're part of the community in terms of participating it helps retention it makes you uh, much more aligned with the process also all right cool i think we are at the threshold all right let's go have fun with it and let's quickly go all right cool and don't run away because of um, we're doing a quiz okay um we're not tracking your quiz so have fun all right let's start with the first one okay let's go people All right, let's see. True or false? Data corruption can lead to missing files, scrambled documents, and program crashes if your data is corrupt. So if your like your simple hard drive is corrupt, would it lead to uh, something worse? That's great, that's great, that's super, super great. So I just have to be a part of uh, uh, of the community. That's for sure. Data corruption can lead to missing files, scrambled documents, and program crashes. All right. Okay. Now we can see you guys are awesome. Yep. All right. Team Monster is leading everybody. Let's see if you guys can. That's catch up great. With them. The so we have is... another. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, please. please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nazo. Okay, and the power on self-test, we call it POST, is performed after the operating system has loaded. So is it true or is it false? The power on self-test, POST, we call it. All right. And some of this we might touch later, but just let's just roll with that's this great we, we are having it so we are having it those uh setups also the beep the beep codes during the computer startup can help identify hardware issues it is one of the most important thing okay it's just the lightning we discussed the beep codes during the computer startup can help identify hardware issues is it true or is it false that's great. That's great. We are having it almost. Uh, that's Excellent. great. That's great. So things are catching up. That's a good news. So let's hope. Okay. Okay. Team Panda uh, is super, super on uh, charge today. So they're just having a real lot. Leave anyone else today. Mm -hmm. We have NTFS as a file system that allows control over user and group file access. The new technology file system is a file system that allows control over user and group file access. So we have discussed the file systems, NTFS, 
HFS plus, we have all those FAT32. So we have discussed, we, you should have a quick idea of NTFS file system that allows control over user and group file access. That's great. Excellent. That's great. Super great response. That's one of the best thing. Okay. 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 That's fine enough. A command line interface CLI, uh, CLI primarily actually uh, serves the need of a non-technical users. So uh, we will discuss about it. That's, uh, don't worry about it. We'll just, uh, because we haven't discussed this uh, CLI thing. So you can just pick an answer of true and false. We'll discuss that. How can it serve us, okay? Primarily normally serve the needs of a non-technical users. So is it true or is it false? That's great. That's great. That's one thing for sure. So. Things are getting in, that's okay, okay. We had an upset over here. So the team monster has just taken <laughs> over to the team unicorn. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Great, okay. We have our good old friend, uh, not old, but our good new friend. Solid state drive SSDs are generally faster and more durable than HDDs. We have discussed about this. Okay, let's see the answer. The answer is going super quickly, true or false. Okay, that's great, that's great. Okay, okay, that's perfect, that's fine. Excellent. Thank you so much, thank you for your great response, that's one thing, okay, oh my goodness, so Team Unicorn is just <laughs> stepping up again. Team, so team Panda is really great... killing us. Yeah, Unicorn Team is Panda has... They have just mm -hmm. taken the top of the table and they're just not leaving it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's mm -hmm. that's one thing for the consistency. The de de defragmentation is a process of dividing a single physical disk into multiple logical drives. Is it true or is it false? Defragmentation. We have discussed that de defragmentation is a process of dividing a single physical disk into a multiple logical drives. So it's also just a kind of a revision, okay? Don't worry about the answers, okay? You'll just, you'll just get into your head and you'll say, oh, I can type this, I can know what, how does the defragmentation works on. That's okay, that's totally fine. Thank you so much for, for the response, for, for taking it. Uh, so we're just having our last question over here. What would you change in class so far to improve the experience? So if you have any answers, you can type that if you have, uh, any kind of a suggestion, if you can, any kind of yeah. feedback, you're most welcome of that. So we always try our little best to make things like uh, fine enough for you people, okay? So it's all yeah. about you and you and you, yeah. okay? Please, if you don't mind, um, just give us an answer. Anything to make it easier for you, we will want to adopt early so that we can implement it within the next two weeks also before we wrap up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, excellent. Excellent. Update deck in advance. Okay, good, 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 good. Job posting, nothing, none. Okay, good. All right, good. We'll make sure we take a look at some of these ahead of time. So thank you so much. And um, over back to you, Naza. And some of you had a question. Let me quickly address that, Naza, before you jump in, if you don't mind. The first question somebody asked me privately was, and I thought it made sense to just share it with the larger group, was they asked me, can they still join the class? We, yeah, please go ahead and register so you can have access. We might close registration later in the week, but register, invite others to register so they have access to the recordings and everything we do. Then somebody asked me about our upcoming cyber GRC class. That's September 30, um, what it's gonna contain. It's a class focused on governance, risk, and compliance. It's a strategy class. A lot of people, we have been privileged to have a lot of our team get jobs in that area. It's our flagship program. Um, so you can take a look at it. I'll share it in the larger forum. You know, if you want to participate in it, feel free to participate in it. Um, so that's a different program entirely. It will cover risk assessment. We have a partner we work with, Risk Rhino, a solution fully. They're going to learn how to do risk assessment, third party risk, a lot of great stuff. And at the end of the day, you can get job as GRC analyst, third party risk analyst, IT auditor times, um, data privacy analyst. So it's it's amazing, amazing program. 
I'll share with the larger team later. Um, let's focus on this because we want you to have that foundation before you start considering other areas in technology, okay? All right, over back to you, Nazar. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. So uh, it was really great to having you in this kind of interaction. These are actually the things that make you actually um, uh, more, uh, more like it, it, it gives you a power to to have uh, to have the learning uh, like in a very sophisticated manner okay so please do take like um, kind of participation in such kind of activities they are just they are just only and only made for you people okay so now without wasting time let's just uh, jump out to our very good old uh, uh, lectures that we are having it today the art of troubleshooting okay this is something that is uh, and that's super super important okay and it will help you a lot in most of the cases how can you the best questions that everyone face uh, is like how can i troubleshoot a computer if it is not right enough if something is wrong from where should i uh, start okay so uh, the the idea is actually to uh, the idea is actually to um, to have those things to actually uh, to troubleshoot them is to start from the very very ground. Okay, so you it, it may be it, it may seems like um, it may seems like uh, why would I start from the very ground if everything is working fine? So there are a lot of reason behind it. Uh, this is how we do in IT. This is how we troubleshoot things. Even if you are like um, like CCNP certified, you're like uh, an administrator, you're still going to need the basic ground clear, okay? That's one thing for sure. The reason behind it, if you just go to the middle, and if you, if you didn't found your solution in the middle, you have to start again from the ground. So you have to uh, to avoid that repetition process, to avoid the time consumption that we are having, and to avoid all of these uh, kind of uh, probabilities. What we actually recommend is to just directly start from the ground. That's where you go. So so maybe some people will will say, how would I go? How would I start from the ground if the Wi-Fi is not fine enough? If like if like let's suppose if my uh, if my LCD is not working if it's light not lightening up if my keyboard is not working if my mouse is not working everything in the IT remember that we always discuss that everything in the IT starts from power okay so make sure whenever you go for any IT equipment you always identify the power okay identify the power and this is where your your troubleshooting starts and identify the power okay the power is on everything light is coming you know that it's totally fine so then you just go probably to the next setup okay, if it is wi-fi you make sure the internet cable is on the you know, internet devices are working totally perfectly fine you don't have any orange or red lights in the it equipments so I think you have like already troubleshooted your 50% of problem. So you just have to dig into all those other 50 and slow and gradually just have to put, a, uh, put into the exact location what the problem is causing. So we have to identify the proper sequence of steps in troubleshooting methodology, diagnose and resolve common motherboard problems, diagnose and resolve common computer memory problems, and we also have to uh, uh, diagnose and resolve common processor problems. We have to resolve common disk storage problems and obviously common computer display problems, okay? So troubleshooting, data corruption, we have cell phone uh, power on self-test and obviously we have the beep codes. The process that combines knowledge experience, one of the most, most important thing in the IT sector is when you, when you have already gone through that situation. For example, if you have already troubleshooted a thing, you will not repeat that. When we always say that do the IT documentation of that error, do the IT documentation of that problem, there's a reason behind it, okay? If it is like very complex problem, uh, we had like even an IT problem that you're diagnosing for three days. So we have to we have, we have to look at what something is, co some, uh, some kind of like, uh, uh, device wi-fi device device was actually disturbing the entire hotel devices 
So we were not like able to um, to find out. We had like hundred of devices. So we're not uh, not able to find except device. So every day at eleven o'clock, we would just face a situation where uh, we we would just uh, face a situation where everything would like just stopped. Okay. So then up to three days that we just uh, we just uh, dig into the problem, 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 and then, we, and then we just found that device. So this is how you have the experience on of each and everyone. Uh, the IT uh, the IT issues you'll be having and you'll be having that experience. So if you document that, it will it will like resolve your it will resolve a lot of your issues. Even if it, it will be okay for the next person that that come in and uh, you can you can save you can save the time a lot from this. And it's like a professional approach, by the way. So, uh, and uh, intuition to quickly identify cause of a problem. So you have to, uh, you have to resolve. In IT, we are always on emergency button, simple as that, okay? So you just have to, they all, they, all of the people, they just say, hey, do you know what these IT guys are always playing games on their computers? They do nothing, okay? As we say that, why, why are we paying someone ask, uh, uh, the company CEO that why are you paying the IT guys money if everything is working fine? And the CEO said that what if I'm not paying that and I have to pay for the external uh, person that they charge a lot for me? So it it it, it doesn't look like the, the same scenario. Okay, so now you learn in the IT, uh, it actually, uh, things may look like super smooth. There are person behind the efforts are there, the kind of like uh, dedication is over there. That's why your internet things, your shared drives, your server drives, your files, your emails, your laptops, desktop, cell phones, tablets, all things are working fine. So this is kind of like a complete kind of a different world here. You cannot compare to finance, accounting, to logistics, to purchasing, to engineering and all the stuff. You cannot compare that. It's a total technical field. Only those persons who are on pure merit, they have done hard work. They have, uh, they are super dedicated their, to their job. They are, they are up to their mark, super hard workers. So the IT is actually just a field of them. Simple as that. So we have data corruption, a memory issue in which unintentional changes have been introduced to your original file, resulting in missing files or data, scrambled documents, crashing programs, spontaneous robots, registry errors, and missing systems. All are actually in the IT systems. This is how you troubleshoot that. This is how you make that working fine. So uh, uh, you can now assume what was power on self-test post that ensures all of the hardware system in working order before loading the operating system, not after loading, okay? It is before loading the operating system, the post actually ensure that, okay, everything is working fine. Is the hardware working fine? Can I load now? So when all our like checks are green, then actually the post send the report to the, to the motherboard. Okay, everything's working fine. You can just now go on and you can just load the operating system. This is how it's done, okay? During this test, an error message may display on screen notifying uh, you of a, of, a, of a faulty component. So if your computer like your motherboard like faulty, it will obviously show you a kind of, uh, uh, you can say a complete error on the screen. Hey, they you know you're, uh, your processor is not working fine. Maybe you have uh, you have split a T on it, or maybe you have just uh, put an ice on your processor. So obviously it will not tell you like there's an ice uh, cube on your processor. It will tell you your processor is not working. Your computer processor is not working fine. So there are, there are like uh, kind of, they are straight to point and you have to resolve that, simple as that. We have the beep codes, so color codes, we have discussed about green, uh, yellow, orange, red. We also have the beep codes, an audio, uh, audible alarm that, uh, alarm that occurs when a computer encounters an issue before uh, post uh, and has completed when booting. So the number and frequency of beeps can be used to compare information found in the motherboard manual and identify the issue. So there are like, for example, we have a lot of uh, beep options in, uh, in, in, uh, in desktop system. They actually have three, two, and uh, when, you, when you just on that, so they have a kind of like complete those uh, uh, audible alarm systems, they, they have that. And you can, uh, you, know, you, you can have kind of like glints of that. You can say, hey, 
it means that the RAM is like, maybe it's not supporting. Okay, that's fine. I can just change the RAM and it, it can resolve my system issue. So that's one, one thing for sure. They also give you a lot of hints over there. So in IT, most of the things are like trackable. Uh, they, they give you a kind of uh, guide that you can resolve your issue. So that's one thing great. They're having it and obviously, uh, it also come with super great experience. And obviously when you go to the field, when you just uh, troubleshoot things, uh, this is where your experiences start and this is where you get polished. So uh, this is, uh, these are the troubleshooting steps. You have to identify the problem. Let's suppose if the LCD is not working fine, what you have to do is you first have to check the power, right? Bo the both cable and then identify what has changed. So just have to look to the LCD, okay, everything is okay. Do I have the HDMI or the DPI display cable or the VGA, the video graphics area cable is working fine? Is something changed over here? You have to ask the user. It's just like uh, asking, uh, like, like a patient is just asking a doctor. So the doctor then cross check uh, from them and they say, hey, so what have you eaten last night? Now, uh, what makes your blood pressure like so high? Have you eaten like um, 30 chickens in a single day? So they'll say, no, I, I cannot eat 30 chickens in a single day. So maybe 20. So obviously there are like some kind of, uh, um, it's just a scenario by the way. Okay. So uh, maybe there are like, uh, there, there are some uh, kind of changes. Maybe the user, you can ask the user, so what have you done if that's turn off your computer suddenly? So they, they'll say, oh, do you know, I just, install a new software and I just double click on that and it makes everything worse. So you have almost identified the problem. So that new uh, was actually the trigger. That was actually the trigger that makes everything worse. And this is how you go that software. If that's not relevant, you can delete that and you can troubleshoot easily. So you can also create a hypothesis over there. You can test the hypothesis to de de determine the cause determine the appropriate fix, obviously, and you have to implement the fix and verify functionality and document the solution, one of the most, most important thing. So just go stepwise, go from the very ground. If it is everything, first go to the power check, then you go ask some uh, questions from, uh, from, from the user. If, if you don't have any user, if that's a kind of a server, then you have to do it yourself. And obviously, uh, if it's on your responsibility, you have to go stepwise accordingly. You have to check the motherboards as, uh, uh, stepwise. You have to check the uh, PSU's power supply unit. You have to check the switches. You have to check the, uh, the hard drive storage devices. And you can also have a very good, um, uh, you can say event viewer. Let me just share this one. This is one thing very, very kind of um, knowledgeable, okay? You can just go to your event viewer. We have that. I think everyone can find that at your left bottom corner of your screen. You can go that and you can just type event viewer, okay? You should be able to see uh, uh, kind of uh, this kind of screen. You can just go to... Uh, Windows logs, you can just go to applications. And do you, you, you see the level over here? It's all white colors, okay? You can just go over here and I think you can just see over here. This is one thing, the red one, okay? We have the air, okay? It's just yesterday, but it's just today, by the way. So uh, it says that the volume shadow copy service are unexpectedly carrying that this, 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 access is denied. So it's not a big uh, fault. This is often caused by incorrect security se settings and uh, or requester process on the side. So there are a lot of guided information in this event viewer. You can go to security, you can go to startup, you can go to system, you can have uh, forwarded events. Even you can also have your application and services log. Go to your system, go laptop, go to your hardware events over here. You can see all of your hardware events. You can see your internal auditors over here. You can have your Windows PowerShell and the list goes on. But by the way, this is something very, very knowledgeable, okay? Even we were always use this application, always use this built-in tool. It can tell you the complete story for you, okay? It can tell you all the things and all the stuff for you, okay? 
So uh, that's one thing for sure. You can just uh, type in the event viewer. Can anyone type, can I have, like most of the people just please type on your chat box, event viewer, please. Just have a quick type. Maybe I can see this or just an event viewer, my friend. Yeah, that's one thing cool application you're having it. You'll be seeing that and you'll be using that event viewer, obviously, event viewer. That's great, Sarah. Thank you so much for your input. So event viewer is your good old friend for troubleshooting, okay? You can see the previous, it's just like a CCTV of your previous event of, uh, if there's an un unforeseen event, you just see it, just go to the CCTV camera, just see what, what's going on in that. So for the troubleshooting, event viewer is your CCTV camera, okay? They tell you, okay, this has done and this is what you have gotten in your, uh, they have installed something. Thank you so much. I, I know everybody can go in and type it into their space bar. It will come up out of your window. So if you go to your space bar and type event viewer, if you are using Windows, it will pop up. So just type it into your search and you'll see it pop up. Here we go. So if you go to your search under your Windows and you type event viewer, it will come up. All right. Back to you, Naza. We have seven more minutes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure. So thank you so much. So this is how you um this is how you uh this is how you do those functionalities in the um you 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 can see the complete uh you can say details of your of your issue in the post and pre kind of all details in your event viewer. You just verify that, just do your you know the knowledge, you say okay, if this is an issue of uh, let's suppose if it's hardware is filling up, so I have to replace, I have to repair, I have to make uh, SSD if it's STD and all the stuff. You can have a, a appropriate solution and tell the user this is the problem and we have to fix like that. So this is how you implement that fix and never, never for, uh, forget a document solution on that, okay? So always do a document solution. When you document that, you know all the things and you can easily like do all, uh, all these, uh, all these kind of, uh, uh, you can say, um, you can repeat that for, for a letter, you can save your time and all this stuff. So how does the malfunction in in, uh, in uh, one of part of computer affect the rest of system? It is dependencies, remember that, okay? Uh, we have dependencies in a computer system. If the RAM is not working fine, the hardware will uh, never ever work, okay? If the hardware is not working fine, the RAM, the RAM will not work. If the PSU power supply is not working fine, nothing will work out, okay? So this is how everything is connected. You have a bunch of series of hardware that are connected with each other. And that's why they have gathered all those things into one single motherboard, okay? And you have to ensure everything is working fine, everything is correct, and everything is in a logical like place, everything is working up to date. And this is how you can troubleshoot all the things. So, so um, one part in computer, always they, they are always connected to most, most of these, uh, most of them, uh, like most of the users have been, uh, uh, those hardware parts have been connected with one another and they are working uh, uh, up to their fullest performance. So when they all like work into the same kind of uh, events that you are in, uh, giving the input and all the stuff, this is how the result come out, okay? So you can say a computer is a teamwork, okay? So you may have a captain and team, you may have a vice captain, so maybe your SSD may be the captain, your you already can say the RAM, maybe the voice captain, and others are the players, the power, the 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 power supply is the player, kind of uh, the, the process actually your coach, and this is how they guide you and know, all the stuff. And uh, the main board is actually your ground. So this is how you how you how you make the thing. So this is a complete teamwork. Yeah, you can just say that. But what is the most effective way to troubleshoot a problem? Obviously, uh, to start uh, from the ground. So uh, you have to make it super fast. That's one thing for sure. Leave everything. Just prioritize your IT issues. And uh, you can get to other things always back. So when you know the urgency of any IT thing, any IT matter, so you have to prioritize that. If it is like uh, super, super important, so if uh, it's like your CEO kind of laptop is not working fine and you're just saying, hey, it's fine enough, I can just troubleshoot that later. So it's not a great approach, okay? You have to make it, 
you have to make it uh, you have to make it super super fast okay why should i troubleshoot a problem before implementing a potential solution so uh, the reason behind is if you did directly go to uh, to the solution they actually make uh, maybe you haven't actually uh, resolved the problem you have just um, for the timing you have just delayed the problem so we always go for the solution or problem not uh, to have on the prompt uh, kind of uh, uh, you can say um, delayed things, okay? So these are some important things and these are some very, very um, crucial points that we are having it and uh, we should always be sticking to that. So um, thank you so much for, for being with us uh, for the today lecture. This is how you troubleshoot and this is how you implement the ID solutions for each and every one. We'll just be uh, improving that within the time for the next kind of, uh, uh, when you deeply go to the lectures. So uh, that's one thing for sure. Always, always be a good troubleshooter. That's uh, efficiency, uh, starting from the very ground, uh, looking if the computer is turning on, you have to look into the event viewer. If not, so obviously you have to check out the power self test and all this thing, the hardware and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the hardware side, the STDs, the SSDs, and uh, all the other reports kind of uh, hardware parts and then you have to proceed. So thank you so much for being uh, with us. And I think that's all uh, for today. Over to you. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, um, thanks, Manaza. Thank you so much. Excellent job. Excellent job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done. Let's give some love to Nazar real quick, everybody. Let's just say some good thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Really well done. Well done. Well done. So one thing I want to just say is please remember, as always, half of it is showing up. Make sure you keep putting the work, your journey. You'll be surprised. It's going to be, for some of us, this will be a life changer for us professionally. You just don't have a clue yet where it's taking you. I can guarantee you. That's our story, most of our story. Sometimes you'll be surprised and you look back and you'll be shocked. What has happened to you? It starts with these simple steps. I have no clue where it's going to take you to. But all I know is that we want to be part or a little footnote in your story of greatness. Put the work, put the time. There's no shortcut. We are not of the illusion that it will just automatically work. But we know when we put the work, the discipline, the time, good things always show up. Um, quick housekeeping thing before we bounce. Uh, please join our YouTube page. I shared it earlier on. Make sure you join it, subscribe, like, put the um, because a lot of time we do live sessions, and that's the only way we can easily captivate everybody at once and you follow us what we, what's going on in our world another thing please remember we will never call you for a pin or anything beware of scammers we want to make sure we protect our team please be mindful if anybody calls you and try to act crazy just know that they are scammers don't fall for those tricks okay and um above all i wish you got speed see at the same time tomorrow have fun rest well just keep showing up i wish you all the best more to come thanks everybody Thank you. Thank you so much. For Thank you, Nazan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. I forgot. For those of us that want to um, see how to navigate the LMS learning management system, please hang on. Let me quickly show you real quick. It's very simple, so don't worry about it at all. It's a simple process, but I'll show you guys real quick, and you'll see what it looks like. And if you've not joined, please join the WhatsApp group and also sign up for the LMS. Let me share my screen real quick and show you what it looks like. It's not going to take a long time. So this is what the learning management system looks like. Everybody should have access to this. If you don't have access to this, to be honest, um, you are shortchanging yourself because there's so much here you can, everything we do is here really. All the documents we need for this class is here. If you can see, this is week one. This is the class recording. You know, this is Naza and I. This is a recording here. These are some key terminologies in IT. And these are the materials for the class. Some of you have asked about the materials. The materials for week one is here. For week two, um, if you look, um, week two, which is class three and four, uh, we talk about application here, then the materials are here. Everything you will need for today and tomorrow is already there. Feel free, go in and download it. It's straightforward, okay? And what is the site for us to go to download it? Let me share my screen. Let's go to academy.skillweed.com. And there you will see the class here.
for those of you that asked about the GROC class for September 30th, this is the link, the first one here. That is, um, we have timeline for that. So a lot of people have raised already, so that's there. But this is the second one, the one we are doing right now. This is a big one right now. Just come here and feel free to register. Once you register, you have access to everything if you are not registered yet. If you are registered already, check your email. You probably got an email already and just log in and you have access to it. So that's really it. Let me see if anyone has a question and I can quickly address it. But that's it's a straightforward thing, to be honest. No big deal. Let me see if anybody has a question about the LMS. All right, I think it's self-explanatory. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. I'll see you tomorrow, same time. Tomorrow, same time. Thanks, everybody. Oh, somebody said WhatsApp. Okay, let me share. Let me share the WhatsApp link again. Uh, please, I will share the WhatsApp link. Uh, and again, you are dismissed. Please, you don't have to wait. Um, this is for people that uh that don't have access to some of this information. Uh, all right, let me share the WhatsApp link on the on Zoom again. All right, I just shared it one more time, and that's it for today. God bless. Bye bye, everybody.